Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson online from CR First Kids Big City Studio. We're so glad you could join us today. I'm going to go ahead and let Miss Katie introduce today's lesson. Hey kids, welcome back to our series called Battle Zone. This series is all about the biggest battles in the Bible, where we are learning what it takes to win a victory in life's toughest battles. So, how many of you guys enjoy singing songs and worshiping God? I know that I do. What are some of your favorite songs? One of mine is called Waymaker. I love singing that song to God. You know, you're probably wondering, what does worship have to do with being in a battle? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. Worship actually has a lot to do with being in a battle, and we're going to learn about that today in our lesson in our Bible story. But before we get into it, let's check out this video. Man, this thing is so cold. Yeah, but it is so good though. You gotta be careful. You know what happens when you eat popsicles too fast. What? I have no idea. Ow! Ow! I told you, brain freeze will get you every time. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, it's gone. It's time. Hey guys, I'm getting suited up for the battle zone. Last time, my brother took the victory. That is not happening today. I plan to get another victory, because this time I brought a secret weapon. See you in the battle zone. You boys ready? Set. Last time, I found a strategic spot. I thought it was gonna help me win. This time, I'm just looking to seek and destroy. What is Matt doing? I can clearly see him. Does he think he's camouflaged? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Is he singing? Is he singing worship songs? I won, uh-huh, I won. Wait a minute, that's not fair. You distracted me with your singing. It wasn't a distraction, it was a tactic. Just like the army in the Bible. I won that battle with worship. What? I've never heard that story in my life. Well, the kids are gonna learn all about it in their lesson today. It's pretty awesome and clearly a winning strategy in the battle zone. Hey boys, come in and eat. I made some shrimp goulash. Shrimp goo what? I don't know about you, but that does not sound appetizing. Even though you never would have thought of worship as an important part of a battle, it really is. And we should worship God not only before the battle is won, but also during the battle. After all, God is worthy of our worship no matter what. But sometimes worship can actually be the way that we win the victory in the battle zone. And we're going to learn about that today in our lesson. So let's learn our What You Gotta Know together. What's happening, you crazy cats? It's me, Disco Dave, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're learning about how when we're in a battle, we can worship our way to victory. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them, when I'm in a battle, I will worship the Lord. That's right, when you're facing a battle, you better worship the Lord. Ah, 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 praise the Lord, praise the Lord, 
ha, 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 that right there is what you gotta know. Well, I'm Disco Dave saying, Dino Mike! All right, kids, stand up. It's gonna go like this. When I'm in the battle, kind of pretend like you're fighting with the sword here, I will worship the Lord. All right, let's try it together. Hey, kids, what you gotta know? When I'm in the battle, I will worship the Lord. Just like that. All right. Let's try parents against kids today. So kids, stand up. Let's try it together. Hey, what you gotta know? When I'm in the battle, I will worship the Lord. Great job, sit down. All right, parents, it's your turn. See if you're paying attention. Hey parents, what you gotta know? When I'm in the battle, I will worship the Lord. Great job, everybody. All right, guys, what you gotta know? When I'm in a battle, I will worship the Lord. Good job, guys, you are so awesome. Cadet Cordy, Cory, reporting for duty, ma'am. Hi, Cadet Corey. Um, remember, you don't have to salute and you don't report to me, so let's just, oh my land. Uh, okay, okay. I'm great, ma'am. We have color wars this week at the academy and I'm pumped. Okay, I can see that, ouch. Um, tell me what exactly is color wars? Um, do you see who can do the best coloring of the coloring pages? And <laughs> I bet that's it. <laughs> uh, no. Each bunk is assigned a color, and then we participate in different battles. I am just trying to get my thoughts in the right place for the battles. Wow. Right now, I'm excited, but also scared. Okay. Well, the Bible teaches us how not to be afraid when we're in a battle. Could I share a little with you? Of course. The Bible is full of God's truth and love. There is no other place to find answers to our problems than God's word. The Holy Bible. Hey, I like that response, Cadet Corey. That's so true, and I'm so thankful for God's word. What Oops. was that? I'm, I'm okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just listen from down here. Okay, I'm glad you're all right. We're in a battle. When you're in a battle and feeling afraid, um, the Bible says that we should remember God's power and promises and we should worship God. And then we won't have any room to be afraid. Yep, that's perfect. Okay. <laughs> when we face the green team in tug of war, that's exactly what I'll do. So I won't be afraid. Okay, well, I'm glad I could help. Um, what color are you in the color wars? Yes, but you'll never guess. Try. Huh. Well, I know it's a green, so is it blue like the ocean? No, ma'am, but I'll give you a hint. Ready? Okay, yeah, I am ready. Okay, all right. Okay. Here we go. Um, so is this like charades, sounds like? Yes. Okay. Okay, now. Okay, sleepy, sleepy, tired. Um, I don't know a color that sounds like any of those words. Can you give me some more clues? Okay, All right. no problem. <sighs> okay, now you're going to sleep. Oh, you're fixing your pillow, pulling like, oh, you're getting into bed. You're getting into bed. Yes. Now what rhymes with, with bed? Okay. Um, bed, red. Oh, you're on the red team. No. Oh. But what color comes after red in the rainbow? Orange. You're on the orange team. Wait. Oh, no. What color comes after red, orange in the rainbow? Um, yellow. 
Yep, Team Yellow. I've got some color wars training to do, so Cadet Corey, fall out. Okay, whoops, 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 Corey, Corey. Go Team Yellow. kids, today's Bible story is really amazing. It's found in 2 Chronicles chapter 2. Now, King Jehoshaphat, everybody say Jehoshaphat, kind of a funny name, right? He was the king of Israel. He received a message that there were three different armies that were coming to make war against them. The Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Munites. Three different armies were coming to attack them. They were really outnumbered it seemed like an impossible battle to win. King Jehoshaphat led the entire nation of Israel in fasting and prayer to ask God for help. God told them that they didn't even have to fight. God told them that the battle wasn't theirs, it was his. You see, God is amazing. His power is amazing. He can fight for us when there is no way for us to win the battle on our own. Next, the Israelites got together and marched toward the place where the three armies were camped. And do you know who they put in the front of their army? It wasn't the swordsmen, it wasn't the cannon launchers, it wasn't even the tanks. No, they put the worship choir in the front. How crazy is that? But they knew that God was going to fight the battle for them, so they put their worshipers out front and began to worship God for what they knew he was going to do. God caused the three armies to become really confused and they began to fight each other. The Ammonites fought against the Moabites and the Moabites fought against the Mennonites. Isn't that crazy? They were supposed to fight against Israel and now they were fighting each other. When all of the children of Israel came over the hill to see what was happening, they saw all of the bodies of the three armies lying dead on the ground, every single one. When they saw all of this, they began to celebrate and worship God even more. They knew that God had won the battle for them. What an amazing story. And that story leads exactly what into you're going to be learning today. You're going to learn that when you're in a battle and you don't know what to do, lift your hands to worship God. He will fight for you. <laughs> Voila! 
Hello, boys and girls. Once again, this is I, Presto Changeo, the world's greatest Presto Digit, Presto Digit. Magic guy, you get it? Well, once again, I am here to boggle your mind and tickle your senses with today's Powerverse. Today's Powerverse says, Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Second Chronicles 2015. Oh, what an amazing Powerverse. But just like any real illusion, at least Magic guy, I like to make things disappear with the help of my handy dandy sidekick, Hokey! My name is Hocus Pocus! Come on, man! You're doing this! You need to be doing this! Okay? Alright, here we go! Ready? Ah, yes! Now, which words should I make disappear? Hmm, how about this one? And this one! Yes! Now, boys and girls, you shall all say the power verse with Hokey! It's Hocus! Whatever, man! Come on! Work with me here! Alright, everyone on the count of three! One, two, three! Do not be afraid! Don't be discouraged by this mighty army! For the battle is not yours, but God's! Second Chronicles 2015! Oh, that was astonishing! But now prepare to be more astonishing! Ging, ging. Er, I am going to now make even more words vanish before your eyes! Like this one! And this one! Ha <laughs> ha! Now, let's just see how well you kids remember it! Say it with me now on the count of three! Ready? One, two, three! Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Second Chronicles 2015. Good job. Now for my greatest trick ever. Not really. You watch it, buddy. You are this close to being stuffed into an oven mitt. <laughs> anyway, boys and girls, it is now time for my greatest trick. I shall make myself disappear. This is Presto Changeo saying, now you see me, now you don't. <laughs> On the count of three, ready? One, two, three, hickle dickle pickle snickle. <laughs> been in a situation that seemed unfair? I know we talked about that a couple weeks ago. Have you ever felt like you were facing a problem so big that it seemed like you were completely outnumbered? Like maybe your mom or dad lost their job and your family didn't know what they were going to do about paying the bills. Then all of a sudden, your mom got sick and there were doctor bills to pay for too. Then your little sister fell and she got hurt. You felt totally outnumbered, just like King Jehoshaphat from our Bible story today. Now we learned today that King Jeho Jehoshaphat had a choice to make. He could choose to freak out and worry about what he was going to do, or he could make a better choice. And you know what? He made that better choice. It's the same choice that we should make when we are in a situation that seems impossible. We should Remember God's power. Now, King Jehoshaphat didn't whine and cry about hard his, how hard his situation was. He looked to God and he prayed. He said, Oh Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. Do you know what Jehoshaphat was doing, boys and girls? He was remembering that God has more power than his enemy. Way more power. Now that's what you need to do. When you face sickness, remember God's power over sickness. When you face temptation, remember God's power over temptation. When you face sadness or loneliness, remember God's power gives us joy. Remember 
God's power. Now, King Jehoshaphat prayed even more. He prayed, oh God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? What's he doing? The same thing that we should do. He's remembering God's promises. King Jehoshaphat was remembering God's promises to his people, the Israelites. And we can do the same thing. God has promised many things to us in his word, the Bible. When you are sick, remember God's promise to heal you. When you are lonely, remember God's promise to never leave you or forsake you. And when you are weak, remember God's promise to be your strength. God's promises are true, boys and girls. He has never broken a promise. We can count on him to always come through when he promises something. And that's what Jehoshaphat knew. He remembered God's promises. But what he did next was totally amazing. King Jehoshaphat told the singers to walk out ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him. Can you believe that? He put the choir out front, not the soldiers, not the fighters, not the ones with the weapons. He put the choir out front. They sang and sang and sang their praises to God. They worshiped him. Why? Because they knew he was the only one who could bring them the victory. And that's what we need to do too. After we remember God's power, after we remember God's promises, we need to worship. You wouldn't think that singing and worshiping God would actually do anything to win the battle. But remember, the moment they started singing and worshiping God, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. By the time the Israelites got there, where the battle was going on, the battle was over, and their enemies had killed themselves. They were dead. That's the power of worship. Now, you and I can have that same exciting result. When we're in a battle, all we have to do is begin to praise and worship the one who can win the battle. God will bring the victory even in the midst of our worship, as long as we remember that he is the one who wins the battle. Worship is easy. Today, I would like to like you to spend some time worshiping. You might have some songs that your parents have that they love to worship. Miss Katie loves Waymaker. If you find a song, I just want you boys and girls and your parents too, to spend some time just worshiping him. And if you're in a battle zone today, you can worship the one who wins the battle. Let's worship him with all of our heart. Let's thank God for winning the battle and bringing the victory. Thanks, guys. I love you. We'll see you next week and see our first kids online.